I'm going to show you how to create a cubist portrait inspired by the work of Pablo Picasso. If you're new to my channel, please support me by liking this video and be sure to stick around and check out the other amazing art videos and art lessons on my channel, Rainbow Parrot Art. And please subscribe. The Cubist art movement was pioneered by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque beginning in 1907. Pablo Picasso in particular was heavily influenced by the African masks that he saw in museums. The designs and symbols on the masks often convey a specific message or meaning to the viewer. These African masks were characterized by bold, abstract designs. These masks challenged traditional European notions about physical representation. Similar to African masks, cubist portraiture breaks down the face into simplified geometric shapes. These fragmented shapes often depict multiple viewpoints simultaneously. Instead of attempting to depict an object in a realistic manner, such as you would see in a photograph, cubist artwork simplifies and distorts an image to capture its essence. Here are a few examples of cubist faces that my students have created. To get started, I'm grabbing an 11 by 14 inch piece of multimedia paper. I'm going to start by drawing an eyebrow line that connects to the nose. On the bottom, I'm adding the nostrils. Now another brow line that's lower down. I often like to work using one continuous line. I'm making an oval for the eye, then some intersecting lines for the iris and pupil. I'm going to stop my line there and start a new line right here. Over here, I'm drawing an eye as if we are looking at it from the side. I'm adding a dramatic bulge that will be the cheekbone. I'm drawing the rest of the eyebrow, a circle for the iris, a circle for the pupil, and a small circle that will stay white. I'm adding a round forehead above the eyebrow. See how my lines intersect with each other? Now for the chin and some big lips. This area is currently one big open facet. If you have any big open spaces like this on your drawing, I suggest that you add additional lines to break up this space. This will make your drawing look more complex and interesting. If you plan to fill in your drawing with paint, I suggest you first outline it with a thick Sharpie. When you're done with the Sharpie, use an eraser to carefully erase your pencil marks. Notice how I'm using a black Sharpie to color in the pupils. This is easier than painting them. I'm leaving the tiny circle inside the pupils white. This will make the eyes look more lifelike. I'm using markers to fill in the teeny tiny, more detailed areas of my drawing. See how I'm using dark green here on the bottom, then blending it into a lighter green. In this way, I'm using two different colors to color in one facet. A note to my students, if you have any areas that are bigger than this area right here that I'm coloring in, please wait and use paint to fill it in. Because we're working on thick multimedia paper, it soaks up a lot of the marker ink and causes the markers to dry out quickly. This is why I only use the markers on the tiny areas. Now I'm ready to add paint. I'm using a size eight round brush to throw down some blue paint. While this paint is still wet, I'm adding some white paint right on top. I'm using a light turquoise color to fill in the left side of the forehead. You can fill in your painting using whatever colors you want. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. To avoid washing paint down the drain, whenever you want to switch colors, you can dip your brush in the water, then pinch and gently windshield wiper it back and forth inside a Kleenex. I repeat, dip, pinch, and gently windshield wiper. 
See how I just prevented all this paint from going into my water and getting washed down the drain? Even though I'm still working with one continuous facet, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here and add an even lighter turquoise color underneath the eyebrow. Notice how each facet has its own unique color. This is one of my favorite art projects. Before I wrap up, I wanted to show you how this style of art has influenced my artwork over the years. These are a few examples of my paintings. And here are a few more examples of some of my favorite artwork that my students made. I hope you love how your painting turns out. Please be sure to say hi in the comments below, subscribe, and check out the other amazing art tutorials and art lessons on my channel, Rainbow Parrot Art.